minus 30 seconds. T minus 20 seconds. You ready for do do more in the future? Trap yes. talk podcasts? Yes. Man. Only, only trap talk. Exclusive. Yes. Exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> oh. So stop calling us. From <laughs> <laughs> the spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the crop, God love it, love it, and not I'm hot from the hop to the club to spot. Get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up with the club to spot, get the club to pop. When I come up. Now tapped into the coolest reptile podcast in the world. I am your boy MJ. What is good, everybody? Happy Sunday. If this is your first time tapping in, do your boy a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That way you're on top of every single podcast, every single podcast that I drop here on the Trap Talk with MJ podcast YouTube channel. Uh, what's good, all my re- recurring, returning viewers and subscribers. Shout out to my trappers out there. Uh, but you guys know how we get down on this podcast, how we start things uh, for the freshest and bestest rodents delivered to your doorstep. Cold-Blooded Cafe is the number one game for that. www.coldbloodedcafe.com. Freshest, bestest rodents delivered to your doorstep. During our flat rate shipping. Check them out on Instagram and go to their website. Uh, shout out to John and Alex over at Sim Container. If you got eggs, put them inside of a Sim box. Uh, less steps, less stress. If it's a Sim, it's a win all day, every day. Shout out to John and Alex. Check them out on Instagram. And then shout out to Steven and Ashley over at Focus Cube Habitats, PVC built enclosures, uh, custom designs, basing out of Texas, flexing Texas all day. Check them out on Instagram as well. Shout out to Jesse and the entire Freedom Breeder crew. Stainless steel racks made out of the United States, the number one stainless steel racks, in my opinion. Uh, I could actually say that from experience now. I got my new Freedom Breeder racks all set up in my room, and I am stoked. Man, this feels good. It took me five years to get this shit, but finally got it, man. So, Shout out to Jesse. Shout out to the entire Freedom Breeder crew for everything that you guys do. Killing us since the 90s. And then shout out to my boy, Miguel Garcia. Always evolving pythons. Always inspiring and always killing the game. Go check out his productions on Morph Market. More importantly, subscribe to his YouTube channel. And check out his uh, Instagram account. Shout out to the entire AEP family. Thank you for your support. Shout out to my boy, Alan, at Amazing Basins. If you love basins, if you're into the arboreal snakes, check out my boy, Alan, on Instagram. He has a, a huge passion for these basins, has bred them. Uh, it, things are looking good this year for him. So without being, uh, without saying too much, please just head over to Instagram. Go support my boy, boy Alan. I appreciate your, all your love and support, big bro. And uh, shout out to Blake Stewart over at Stewart Design. If you're looking to elevate your game when it comes to your brand, if you want to brand yourself to the fullest extent, to the most professional extent, Blake Stewart is the way to go. He's helping the biggest names in the industry as we speak. So shout out to my homie, Blake Stewart. Appreciate your love and support. And shout out to the OG, triple OG of the ball python game. Really the reptile game altogether. My boy, Mark Bailey over at Mark Bailey Reptiles. Please check out his productions on Morph Market. Also been killing the game for many years. So shout, shout out to my boy, Mark. Thank you for your support. And shout out to these guys, 110% the leaders in the industry. My boy, Rami from the Reptile Super Show. 
the hitter, the number one reptile super show, the number one reptile show in the in the West Coast by far. So make sure if you are on the West Coast, you make it to a reptile super show. Anaheim's right around the corner. And I cannot wait to see you guys there. And then also shout out to uh, NARBC, uh, Bob Ashley, Brian Potter. Uh, those guys have been killing it, bringing the Super Bowl reptile shows to you. Um, and make sure you do what you guys got to do to make it to an NARBC. Uh, people like, uh, you never know who you're going to see at NARBC. I've seen the most biggest legends, uh, Greg Maxwell, just to name one, um, at NARBC. So check them out. And then, uh, guys, don't forget Animal Con, man. Let's go ahead and get pumped up for Animal Con because this shit's going to be cracking. Shout out to my boy Brian Barcheck for throwing such an amazing event for all the creators. But it's going to go down August 27th through the 29th. Make sure you head over to AnimalConUSA.com and get your tickets. Let's go. I'm rolling there. I'm going to be in the building with Snake Master Exotics, uh, Ari, Ellie, Max of Boreals. There's going to be some heavy hitters with me at Animal Con. So let's roll up and let's meet up. It's going to be a good time. Shout out to Phil Goss and everyone who supports U.S. Arc. This is not a game. This is not a fucking gimmick. We should all be supporting U.S. Arc. Let's all come together and help Phil fight for our animal rights our animal rights not an individual thing this is a together thing okay so if you support us arc i appreciate you if you don't know what us arc is head down to the link below click on the us arc link become a member and read up on it also become a, a youtube subscriber to the us arc youtube channel as well best way to stay up um, on current events if you want to know uh speaking of current events if you want to know what's happening with my collection what i have breeding and all that good shit, you're going to want to head over to instagram right now give me a follow MJ Exotics Cartel It's where I post all my passion projects, all snakes that are available. Anything that I sell is based off that Instagram. And then go give the uh, podcast uh, Instagram a follow as well, Trap Talk with MJ Podcast. Shout out to my Twitch viewers. I see the Twitch viewers going up. If you would like to support this channel more than a subscription, more than a like, more than a comment, um, if you just want me to keep going, man, we'll check it out. You can send any donations you'd like to Exotics Cartel with an A, not an E, over to PayPal. Or you can simply drop a super chat. If you got a question for my boy Steve, if you really want to have a question and have him answer it, drop a super chat. I'll make sure I will ask Steve the super chat, and we will definitely get that uh, going. For I, I appreciate all the love and support, honestly. Hey, anyone just tapping in right now, I got 43 people in the building. Make sure you hit that like button for my boy Steve. And, uh, man, it's going to be an awesome time. And I will say, last but not least, shout out to my Patreon members. My Patreon members on my hearts my family we are growing if you want to get more out of the reptile uh, game if you want to get more out of this podcast you want to tap in and get more into what i have going on then you're going to want to go down to the link below and join the trap talk patreon family come fuck with us come join the discord uh we have we get together every Sundays. I will be planning special guest appearances for these Sunday Zoom sessions that I have every Sunday with my with my family members. So if you want to tap in with us after this podcast, right after this podcast, Trap Talk Zoom session going down. The link is inside the Patreon page. So make sure you go down, head down, join the Patreon today, and come fuck with us after the show. And I cannot wait to tap in with all my trappers. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to my supporters, man. But who's here? Who's ready for this episode, my boy, Steve Angeli? Because I've been waiting for this episode for a while, over two years in the making. Who's here right now? Oh, hold on. On, time out before i finish i want to say my little brother my homie lucas cobra keeper jr just graduated high school my man is not a little man anymore now he's a young man sit listen congratulations lucas i'm so excited to see what you do in this industry bro i have a big feel i have a huge feeling that you're gonna be making some huge 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 fucking moves in this game so a can't wait to kick it with you again sometime soon b huge congratulations c kiss your mom because your mom loves you to death kiss your pops kiss your family members but yeah man happy uh graduation and uh yeah man cannot wait to hang out with you mom can i does that mean we get to smoke all the time oh we were smoking together anyways it doesn't matter so anyways i'll see you soon lucas congratulations and everyone head over to instagram false cobra keeper jr follow my boy lucas and congratulate him on congratulate him on uh, graduating high school that's shit sick all right what is good who's in the building k zotics woo, woo. super excited for the episode so am i julio fulio what is good thanks for tapping in julio's a trap talk patreon family member all day every day the homegirl lily what is good trap talk family member all day every day the homie mark anderson what is good is that a camel Fuck, that's a camel. Trap Talk Patreon family member all day, every day. The homegirl Chantel, what is good? Trap Talk Patreon family member, Team Zoo Dreams in the building. Uh, the homie Jason Holbrook, Team Zoo Dreams all day, every day. It's my boy Barbara J. Give him a follow on Instagram. Big homie Mike, 1776 Exotics, one of my day one Patreon members for sure, day one homie. Give him a follow on Instagram right now. He has mad things in the works, all pythons, chondros. That's my dog. Thank you so much, Mike. I appreciate all your love and support. What is good, a.k.a. the panda. I hope I said that right. Look, panda in the building. Uh, Royal Bama Reptiles, what is good? Trap Talk Patreon family member all day, every day. Eric Smore Factory, what is good? The homie Josh Scale Fizz and Feathers. Yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. 
one too, my man. Uh, Sunshine State and Sulfurs, what is good? Thanks for tapping in the homie. Rudy, 420. Anyone knows what's – yeah, come on, bro. We're about to smoke tough. You know how we do. Uh, the homie Calvin, uh, your comment was unnecessary, but I love you. Thank you for being here. Burning Heart Exotics, what is good? By the way, Calvin's a big-time Trap Talk family member all day. Head of security. Don't fuck with me. That's my boy. Uh, Burning Heart Exotics, Trap Talk family member all day, every day. Thanks for tapping in. The homie Austin Anderson, OG homie in the building. What is good? The homie Hissy Fitz, Reptiles in the building. Trap Talk family member all day, every day. Welcome back to the Patreon family. Appreciate having you back. Josh Fennelin, my boy right there. Josh in the building. Thanks for tapping in. Living Oddities. God damn, did you change your name? Patrick Rose changed his name, Living Oddities, Oddities TV. Whatever, we need to talk about that. What is good, Sound Serpents? What is good? The homie Sean in the building, thanks for tapping in. Uh, let's see, Unique Muted Morphs, what is good? Another guy who changed his name, what do you know? And we're going to end it with my boy, Dom. Se <clears throat> Actually, hold on. What's up, Dom? Thanks for hanging out. Appreciate it. We're going to end with my wife right here. My wife in the building. What is good to my wife? Thank you, babe. You know, I know we're talking about venomous stuff. So safety first, right? That's what we're going to get into tonight. So we're going to end it with my wife because if it's anything, this guest rides or die for his wife as well, which why I love this guy so much. But either way, I want to just say I've been looking to bring this guy on all the way back since I had Unfilled Reptiles podcast. This guy, this is a guy that me and Forrest wanted to bring on. Okay. So this is like, this goes way deeper than a lot of you guys think. Uh, again, rest in peace, my boy, Forrest Fanning. A lot of you don't know who Forrest is. Hear me talk about him quite often, but this is somebody connected on that kind of triangle as far as like, you know, how that, how that thing works with, uh, my passion with animals, Forrest and the homies. So without further ado, my boy, Steve Angeli tapping in from Sacramento. So here he is, Steve Angeli from Steve Angeli Reptiles. What is good, my man? Hey, how you doing? Thanks for being here, bro. How you living? Thank you for having me. Hey, you're going to be on TV someday, man. I like your style. Y'all like your energy. <laughs> hey, I like your shirt. I like your shirt. Hey, me too. I like you. <laughs> hey, bro, hey, I'm not going to lie. You, you gave me a heads up. Either. Remember remember when you, uh, I, I bought a beaded from you and you're like, yo, I'm sending you one of my shirts. And this is a fuck. You're like, yo, this is a sick shirt. This isn't a typical shirt. And I was like, okay, all right, let's see it. Bro, when I opened the box, I was like, this is the sickest shirt I've ever seen. Like the details, like you could see what it is. I, I, I'm just, I just want to give you props, man. This is a really sick. Oh, thank idea. you, I appreciate it. So, uh, Steve, I, I, think, I think when you called me, I was a grouch, man. So I, I wanted to give you a shirt for being, for being cranky. <laughs> I think so, dude. You and I are alike on so many levels, and we'll get into that <laughs> in the podcast. But for everyone who doesn't really know what it is that you do in the industry with these reptiles, kind of give us a little background on what you work with and, and what it is that you've been working with for however long, Steve. So um, in 19, so back in um, in the 90s, right, um, I had a little incident um, with the alligator snapping turtle, and I got a fine for, I was, uh, from fishing game. And wow. so, uh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, you know, I was new at the whole thing. I had a job. I wasn't really uh, aware of everything that was going on. It was a hobby at the time. Right. And um, I went to my friend Jonathan Emerson's store, Emerson's store, East Bay Vivarium, and they had a beaded lizard in there. It was a uh, fifteen hundred bucks, and that was a lot of money back in like nineteen ninety seven, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, that's fucking cool. It's a venomous lizard, and it's legal in California. So I'm like, but then, you know, at the time I was working in a warehouse making eleven dollars an hour. So I'm thinking, well, you know, I, that'll be nice. Well, I get a reptiles magazine, right? And I see in the back they had our ads in the back: Applegate, beaded lizards, Robert Applegate. And right. uh, I called him up, and they're like twelve hundred bucks, just three hundred dollars less. When you're making eleven bucks an hour, three hundred dollars is a big deal, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Dude. so, so he called, and he's like, "Yeah, I got these lists." I'm like, "Well, he's all I'll sell you one for for twelve hundred bucks. How about you give me a deposit?" And this is, I think it was around, I'm gonna say uh, January. He's all, and you make payments on it, and you know, you come down in San Diego to the reptile show, and uh, you pay it off and, and pick it up. I'm all, well, let me let you know. Let, I'm all, let you know tomorrow. He's all, so we don't have a deal. And Bob taught me right there, what you say is what you do. Your word is your bond. So right. I, I thought about it. I crunched the numbers. I called Bob the next day. I made a deal with him. I went and got a postal money order. <laughs> That's how old it was. A long time ago. Wait, was. So what year? What year, Steve? <laughs> what, what year? 1998, I want to say. 97, Damn. 98. Woo! I'm going to say good... 98, okay? 98 all right, all right. for sure. And, um. So I sent Bob a postal money order. Uh, it's like I gave him 300 bucks down. And I sent him every time I got money from work, I sent him money. And I remember taking the trip down to San Diego and going to the reptile show. Back then, that show was cool, man. They had all kinds of cool shit. It was the first year came in, lizards came in and everything. Anyway, so 
And I went to Bob's house and he put the first beta lizard in my hand and it, it had a hold of my shirt. He's all, I'm all, I got it. And I was, I never held a venomous lizard, so I didn't know. Right. And Bob's like, right. it's got you. It took it out of my hand anyway, but I took it home and, um, and my, and I, you know, of course I was obsessed with this thing. And so I'm going to say this, if you have a desire in your heart for something good, man, God put it there and he's going to give yes. you a path to get it. If you follow your heart, your passion, man, it, it's going to come true. If you put the work period. Period. And, and, it's up. You. It's up to you to take that road, though. It's even though it's exactly. Scary. And and sometimes you gotta. Sometimes the 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 path is egregious and hard. If something's got value, it's hard. I have a spiritual advisor. Sometimes I'm like, it's hard. He's like, stop saying that. Of course it's hard. <laughs> yeah, it's stop supposed to be hard. That. It's supposed to be hard. You, you Everything that has value should, is difficult, right? So my goal was to have two point four beaded lizards, right? Right. <laughs> and then. And then, so anyway, I started, I got a second job in the late nineties and I funneled all that money into beaded lizards. I also, my friend, Chris Ryman, who was then called Gila ranch, um, was local. And I bought a bunch of his be very nice beaded lizards from Chris too. And, um, and, uh, shit, man, I started breeding them. And, uh, I think I got 11 eggs in 2000 and I had one of those incubators that has an ongoing fan and it dried my eggs out. They all died. Oh, if you're breeding heliderma, the fan can't be constant. It's got to go on when the heat goes on and shut off when the heat shuts off. Wow. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I learned that lesson, and um, I built my own incubator the following year, which was 2001. And um, I, I think 2001, yeah, and I produced two babies, but the temperature was low, so I had some deformed tail kinks. One of them had an egg sac. I had to sew it up, but they both two survived. The hmm. following year, I produced 10. I had some tail kinks. I still had the temperature too low. I learned that the ink, the thermostat temperature is not your egg temperature. And I learned that that year. So now I start, I start temp gunning my eggs. So for helidermatid lizards, you want your te egg temperature, not your incubation incubator temperature. You want your actual egg temperature between 80 and 84 degrees. Optimum is like 81.5 degrees. At that temperature, heliderma, Horridum and Heloderma exasperatum will hatch in approximately 180 days. Okay? okay. Heloderma alvarezi will hatch in approximately 155 days. Heloderma suspectum will hatch at that temperature and that same temperature in approximately 135 days. Wow. Okay. So let's let's take things back here. The, the first species of beaded that you bought from Bob Applegate, it was about to Bob Applegate's legend, but... What, what kind of species did you start start off with? What, what? It was exasperatum. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And, and 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 just to be just to clarify, exas exasperatums are the biggest out of all the species, or no? No, no, not at all. So what I found, okay, there's races. So so they're classified in four four. It was four subspecies. It was Hilloderma hardum hardum, Hilloderma hordum exasperatum, Hilloderma hordum alvarezi, Hilloderma hordum Charles Bogardi. Now now they. So I'm, I'm not sure fish and wildlife looks at it as still as a subspecies. So I don't know if it's been changed, but the scientific community in 2010, Daniel Beck and um, all his colleagues did a whole bunch of DNA work. And I, and so also uh, the Gila monster was broken into two claves, Heloderma suspectum, suspectum, Heloderma suspectum, sanctum. Right. And I was, I've always, I was saying before this, this thing came out, cause I got my permit in 2008 that um, it's the same animal. Well, they came back and they said all four beaded lizards are so genetically diverse they're their own species. So there's four different species of beaded lizards now. And, and, and Gila monsters are only one species. They're the same species. only suspect them. There's no symptom. It's a false subspecies. So anyway, um, but yeah, I started out with the real four beaded lizards about size. It depends on the population. I've seen exasperated that are huge and enormous. I have some here that are, I got some that are probably 36 inches. I have a southern horridum that was born in 2001 that is probably pushing 39 inches now. Okay. But he is also, that animal, that horridum is a descendant of Bob Applegate's Fernando, who's who now is uh, owned by Chad Brown. And I think he's probably 41, 42 inches. And he's uh, he's at least, he uh, Fernando was captured as a young adult in like 1968. So I'm going to guess he's close to 60 years old. Oh my God, that's 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 impressive. I love that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. go ahead. I was kept talking. I, hey, I'd like to talk. I like to hear the sound of my own voice. You're good, Steve. <laughs> so do we. You're good. You're in a good place. Uh, okay. <laughs> go ahead. 
So going back to you breeding your first clutch in 2000, right? At that point, how big was your group? How many beaded? Where were you at at that point in 2000? I think I only had about – in 2000, I had the two babies I had gotten because Bob sold me um, – Bob sold me – uh, two babies in 90, I'm going to say 98, and um, but he only had three babies. One of them died, and I gave him a deposit, and he um, he sold uh, one to somebody else. And so he gave me a yearling female um, that he had, was holding back. He gave me that instead, which was really nice of him. And I've all, I learned that from him, too, man. If somebody puts a deposit, you give them something else. It'd be better if you can, you know what I mean? Bob was always straight like that. Let me tell you, I want to give you kudos real quick. I mean, I, I want to let people know how, how, what kind of guy you are from what I know, but what kind of sparked us even talking was Stephen Cush had no idea that Forrest had prepaid you for a baby before he passed away. And I mean, you, you had your heart just like, Hey, I mean, he, even though, you know, he was you know gone or whatever. I mean, you didn't have to fucking speak up and be like, here, make sure you take the baby. But I mean, you took care of that. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, you know, I thought that was awesome of you. Well, thank you, man. But, hey, there was a carpenter man a long time ago. He tried to tell all of us how to live, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, to go to go back, Steve, you know, you know, one thing that you kind of t- talked to me in the beginning is, like, the, the cleanly, like, how, I mean, it, being clean with these babies is super important, right? Like, um, cleanliness and whatnot. I mean, what was your trial and error like when you were first – hatching these i mean did you have most success more than failure were you getting a lot of failures what was happening with you learning that learning how to hatch these out so um you know if they hatch out healthy they're pretty bulletproof um like the first two i had one of them had an umbilicus sticking out i had to tie it off um i i dr seward uh i called dr seward at the time and he's like use a dental floss and, and tie it off and then right. cut it and right. that's what I did. And right. it lived. But that when that happens, about 50-50, 50% it'll survive. Mm-hmm. And um, and I think the man upstairs let it survive because I was so like, it was my first two babies. I mean, I had been trying for, you know what I mean? It was a big deal for me, right? Yeah. And um, anyway, and so, um, but if they hatch healthy, they're pretty bulletproof. Um, I'm so concerned now because I have so many animals now, right? So I separate my babies and I make sure I spray everything with them. I use that rescue and use paper towels. And I I used to use water bowls and clean them. But now I buy deli cups, eight ounce deli cups. I buy them from the restaurant supply place and I throw them away, man. I use them and toss them. Yeah, I mean, when you when you do the water changes, everything gets new. Like you toss them. Okay, throw them away. Right. Right. And I, I keep all my new my babies in a separate room because adults, you know, a lot of times I have. Geez, I mean, I, I haven't got the whole count, but I have close to 50 Gila monsters, and I have, um, shit, I got, I got about 15 pairs of adult exasperatum, I have like five pairs of adult hordum, I have, um, we have, I'm, I, there's no, there's no, there's no I, we, me and my, my wife, what's your wife's name, what's your wife's name, let's see, um, Steve, what's your wife's name, Krista, Krista, shout out to Krista. I just want to say shout out to the wife, Krista. Thank I was, you. Shout out to your wife, too, man. Hey, uh, a wise man put his wife first because your wife's your best friend, and ain't nobody in this whole world will go to the lengths that she will for you. You bet people better know that. If you're gonna be nice to anybody, you better be nice to her. 100%. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, um, yeah, so um what was I what were, what were we talking about again? Uh the uh b- b- fuck. Ra- I- raising babies. Yeah, we were just talking about the um, – god damn it, my mind went Keeping blank. them clean and everything. So, right, um, right. yeah, so I, 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 I use paper towels and I, and I, I, on their babies. I don't put them on bedding because I don't want them eating bedding and getting impacted, right? Once right. they can eat an adult mouse, I throw them on bedding. It's okay, right? And I found okay. that they do fine – exasperate them do fine on um, – on, um, you can use pine shavings like America's Choice. It's cheap. I used to spend money and you use sandy chips and all that shit, but them pine shavings work fine. It's what okay. Rep the chip. I mean, any of that stuff will work great, but it's just I go. I got a lot of animals, so I go for um cheap. I go to the feed store and buy all my stuff, man. So I, okay. I got to go volume, right? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, anything will work right for them. They're pretty easy, man. Once they get big enough not to swallow the bedding, 
you keep pretty much on anything. But I think paper towels when they're babies is the best, cleanest way to keep them, right? Okay. Now, if we could go go back to as far as you establishing these babies, um, you know, like the umbilical cord situation. I mean, how, when do you resort to assist feeding or having to help them get started? I, you know what? I've never really had to uh, assist. Uh, so – some babies will eat live food right away. I would say about 50%. About probably um, the other uh, 45% will eat if you tap them on the nose and stick it in their mouth. It's not really a – and then they'll taste it. And once they taste that blood, they'll swallow it. Some right. of them are really – there's 5% that get really wound up like they're really afraid. Yeah, and those I'll pick up in my hand with one hand, and I'll, I'll, I'll put the pinky to the back of their throat, and I'll sit still. If you can get it to the back of their throat, and once it, it's like a reaction comes, they'll swallow it, right? Right. But this takes patience, right? And when you have <laughs> when you have a lot of babies, it's kind of difficult. But I mean, and sometimes I have force fed them just because I don't I don't have time. I have to I have like you know because we produced since two thousand and I'll say this um, we have produced at at at, at Horde and Angeli Reptiles here at this address since. Uh, since I started in 2001, wow. we produced over 1,200 um, baby beaded lizards here. Damn, bro. Uh, yeah. And, and, and I, we will get into as far as like, you know, throughout the, the whole sense of this this career of yours with breeding, you know, as far as like what was the peak, I feel like. I mean, but before we get into that, I'm just curious, um, you know, a lot of people are trying to wrap around their heads or – you know, uh, if anything, a lot of people always talk about what's right as far as the enclosure for a species like this. And if we could talk about what you recommend from a baby all the way throughout to an adulthood as far as enclosure size. I mean, what, what's your what's your take on that? You already said it when you opened up the meeting. Jesse and Lindy have Freedom Breeder, man. I use Freedom Breeder for everything. I got Freedom Breeder rack, baby rack, and I Freedom Breeder uh, uh, um, tubs. I keep I, I breed all my animals in, in Freedom Breeders because I, I have a lot of animals. Yeah, I didn't even finish. I also have me and my 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 good brother. Shout out to John Heidecker out in Florida. Uh, yes. Me and John uh, pooled our money together and and, and imported uh we imported uh, Alvarez from Mexico with Sides, the first ones ever to be imported in the United States. Oh my! And um, God. out of that group, um, we have right now still we have um uh, five point four adults. So um, we're working with right now. And mm. I found they're more difficult to breed. Um, we produced since 2016 when I got my first import. We produced four the first year, 21 the second year, 20 the third year. And I thought, man, I'm going to produce 40 of these things. Man, then I got eight, <laughs> eight last year. And I got all my eggs went bad this year. And I lost one of my females gravid. And uh, yeah, so um, they've been a little tricky. But I think still, I think I produced 53 of them if my count's right since 2016 and i think that's probably more than anywhere else you know it's my passion but it was uh i wanted those lizards since i started a long time ago i mean i'm not, I'm not gonna lie bro like i'm obsessed and with the quality of your ex exasperatums you know and the other species but the alvarez alvarez i is one of my dream hands down dream beaded lizard species like i need to have that at some point it was like, my dream bro i mean <laughs> we and, and it's like I had stocks when, when so I I had met this guy, man, a friend of mine in Mexico, and he called me out of the blue, man, in about 2000, and he's like, "Hey, I got these, I got, I got these Alvarez, I got Sidey." <laughs> he's like, "I was supposed to sell them to a guy in Europe, but he got sick, he couldn't pay for them. Are you interested?" And I'm like, "Well, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm on. I want a bunch of males, right?" right. So he basically, um, he's all saying, "I'm like, can you give me some ultrasounds?" He sends me ultrasounds like. I don't know, two weeks later, I don't know what the fuck I'm looking at. So I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we'll do it. And I had some stocks. I called my mom. I'm like, can I sell the stocks you gave me when I was a kid? My mom's like, yeah, for those lizards, do it. She's like, yeah, you can do it. Uh -huh. And John, my friend John Heidecker in Florida, like one of the the one of the one probably greatest radiated tortoise breeders. He's also uh, um, an owner of 3J's uh, uh, Turtle and Tortoise Sanctuary down in Miami with um, um, his two other brothers. And um, – and John's like a, 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 a one of like a, like family to me. And me and John pulled our money together, man. And we uh we we went in and, and we imported those lizards. Uh, at five imports we got with sides on them. I sent some of them over to Europe. I sold a few here, and the rest we kept. So, 
That's what's up. Now you <clears throat> you mentioned how the Alvarez eye is is a little more difficult than the other species, but altogether, all what's your approach when it came to breeding these? Like, I mean, and, and, and what do you recommend? Like, you know, you, can you just get away with a pair, or does it, it does it take more than that? Uh, so, uh, so in my experience, if you <sighs> want to breed halodermatid lizards, you need multiple pairs. I would say. I mean, now can you get can you get a pair and get a good pair and get lucky? Sure, man. Absolutely. But I mean, it's a numbers game, man. You know what I mean? Because also, especially with suspectum and with the Alvarez eye, all animals are like people, man. Every girl don't like every boy. And right. You don't. And vice right. versa. Yep. Some of them don't like each other. Right. I've had Gila monster females. I put a certain male in there and they're fucking fighting, man. You know what wow. I mean? And, and there's certain ones that just like each other. It's a trip. And my, I have also my buddy Quetzal Doyer owns a zoo in Costa Rica. He's also opening a new fantastic reptile zoo out in Houston to, around the, the, uh, I think the Austin Reptilandia. area. Reptilandia. Our, what's that? Reptilandia. Right. Yeah. Right. Reptilandia. But he, he, you know, Ari works for him and they have a new place in Texas. It's going to yeah. be off the chain, man. I already, bro, I was already, I've already been there. I've, I, flew, yeah. I flew there and did a vlog. I did like, I, I'm like, I see. I'm going to send you the link after this, but I already did like a behind the scenes there. It's fucking nuts. It's like Jurassic Park. It's of course it is. Hey, Quetzal's a zoo, man. He loves what he does. I was, as a matter I was just on the phone with that dude like today over because some guy in Mexico found a lizard in Chiapas and he sent it to me. The picture he's all, they're saying this is horrid and my mama ain't horrid him. And he's like, oh, and I, he, I think it's Charles Bogarty. I do. And, and also about that, that whole 200 in the wild is bullshit. That's what, it. Mean, there's, that? what do you mean 200 in the wild? What does that mean? They're saying there's only 200 Charles Bogart I left in the wild. That's fucking, that's a fucking, there's, I would say there's 20, 20 times more than that. And, and I'm not saying they're not rare. They're rare, but I mean, they live in a jungle where animals are, are, are seldomly out of shelters and stuff like that. I mean, a lot of people found, and there's a whole, um, there's a company down there that Quetzal knows of a, a, a concrete company that, that's on, that owns half the land they're on. And he allowed Quetzal to go in there, and he said they they found quite a few of them. You know wow. what I mean? What, what, yeah. I, so I'm anyway, curious. I'm curious because you know I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Quetzal, man. So wh when did you when did you cross paths with Quetzal? Dwarf? So I saw I saw I saw, I sent Quetzal some exasperatum back in fucking I don't know, dude, 2003, an adult <laughs> pair, and uh, it was really hard to get the sides, man. It took forever, man. And I, he gave me a deposit and I, I went through and I got him just lizards and he loved me for that. Right. So Quetzal got Alvarez I first and he bred one baby and he told me as soon as I get any for sale, I'll say you're first, man. And uh, we became friends and um, it, he told me they're different and they're hard to breed. And I didn't believe it until I got them. <laughs> but I just, you know, he bred a couple more also uh, like about seven years later. The one baby ended up being a female. So I guess the mother had died, got egg bound and died. And wow. um, yeah, so we uh, shared information and, and we've just been friends ever since, man. That's epic. And, um, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, he's the one that, you know, basically told me they're different. And he also told me to check the temperatures in, um, in Nantone, Guatemala. It's the closest to where they live at. And when I got the animals I had, I basically tried to mimic the temperatures there. You know, because um, and they're breeding. You know, the regular uh, and their cooling period. They, you know, the temperature goes in the fifties at night, but it warms up to about seventy-five to eighty in the daytime. So that's what I did. I, I put them in my cold room. It's that's basically um, that's um, you know, fifty-five degrees, and I, I let them get down to that at night. And I and I I turned I put a timer on and I heated them to seventy-five in the daytime, and it worked. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So um. I'm starting to think though this year, this year I took them out a little later and I let, I, I started doing it like that, but I didn't do so good last year. So I just left them down around 60 degrees for about a month and a half. So we'll see how that does this year. If we they could have... take them cooler temperatures, it's fine. I mean, if you don't bring them down below 60, they're, they're fine. Now, if, if, if we can kind of go back to like the, the numbers game, right. What you were talking about when it comes to breeding, um, it, it, a, a best case scenario when you're approaching, let's just say a single project, one girl that you want to get to breed, you're, you're saying it's best that you at least had two males to try to battle out for that female. You at, think? At, at least like my heel is right now. I'm breeding my heel monsters right now. I think about five more I already grab it. 
but I, I match the colors with what I want, but I also, but I have multiple animals, so right. I can put this with this to try to get what I want. Yeah, you know I mean, right. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. But you definitely need for Gila monsters, especially when you put another male, when you switch males in cages, they can smell that male and they start huffing and puffing it. And I mean, if you're not careful, they'll latch on. To it. Sometimes they, if they get too wound up, they'll latch onto your female. You got to watch them. You know what I mean? Um, the beaded lizards will start wrestling. They'll wrestle. They won't hurt each other right away. It's a lot easier. So basically, the female is already in there, and you just drop two males in there. Basically, is all you do. No, right? I don't. No, I, I have. I pair them up, and then around this time, for me, for Gila monster, for so, so I'm talking about Gila monsters now. So Gila monsters generally breed in um, April, May, right? So I put them all together the first of May, and about the middle of the month, or about about first week of May, I start rotating the males. So I would take, so I got two pair, I got two pairs. I would switch the males, switch them, just switch the cages. They could smell the other male in the cage. I got them all in a freedom breeder rack all together. So they're like right, right next to each other. You understand what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. Now, I mean, look at this. I'm checking. Can you see the video here that we're looking at? Yeah, I see it. <clears throat> so you, this is, yeah, but we, I mean, this is the kind of scenario you're talking about. I mean, like, it looks like you have four beaded in here. Do you know? Do you I know do. Kind of, I have two. What, yeah, What's the race of Alvarezi in there? So the Alvarezi, okay. they don't fight as much, man. Mine don't. I've seen them fight in the wild from videos, but mine don't. They tolerate each other. So um, I I would put them I would put them in groups at uh, two point two, and I would rotate the males every couple of days, and they're in a group right there. So all you're doing is it's two point two, and then every so often you put the other two males in the other. You just exactly. You swap. But now wow. this is diff this is different species now, Mike. Okay, so with with exasperate them, you can't do that. They'll start fighting, and they'll start. Okay. And same with horde them. They'll start wrestling hard, man. And but what I'll do, like so, exasperate them start to breed about right now into June, right? So right. I start rotating my males. If I see one lock, I'll start throwing two males together. I'll let them wrestle, man. I'll watch them wrestle. They'll roll up into a bow and they'll fight, and I'll let them go for about nah. Maybe two or three minutes till it starts getting too rough, and then I'll separate the males and I'll put one in one cage, and they'll like three females right away, dude. Wow! Yeah. And how? I mean, I mean, I, you know, you say about two, three minutes, but can they really fuck each other up if you don't stop they it? They can, like, but the beaded them? lizards will wrestle before they start biting. Suspect them, a okay. Gila monster will tear each other limb from limb. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't. Okay. Now you can't. Like Doctor Stewart used to tape up their mouths and do it, but I don't think I found. I don't think it's that necessary. I think if you just put them in the same cage, they start huffing and puffing. You can tell. They get in another cage, they can smell that male. I mean, they don't even like me messing with them. You know what I mean? So, right. like, like I'm saying, when I'm talking to you, all these species are different. Right. Alvarez is different than right. um, Alvarez is different than exasperate them and horn them. Suspect them is totally different. It's different. Okay. Right. If we want to talk about exasperate them, I let them wrestle. Horn them too. Horn them and exasperate them, breeding cycles, egg incubation. The way I breed them, the rest of them, same. I do the same thing. Right. Now, with the if we could talk about the exasperatum real quick, um, you know, when it comes to you separating them, like, you know, after it's done and you're like, all right, this has been enough, I mean, is it pretty easy to separate them, like just to pull them apart or? or yeah, or, or, or? I, I do that, man. I've never really been – I've been I've been bit by an adult beaded lizard. Like, I've been bit by babies a lot because I used to when, – when I was new at this, I was so excited, like a spaz, bro. I try to pick them out when they were hatched. I get bit all the time, dude. Oh, my God. <laughs> See, I don't do that anymore. Now I let the whole clutch hatch. And you, you see me open those boxes on, on – on, I just let them all hatch and I pull them out. It's fine. You know what I mean? I love it, bro. I love, I, love, I love seeing you open up those boxes and all those babies. Yeah, yeah I used to pick them all out, though. I get bit a lot doing that, so I quit doing that. You so know what I mean? If we could kind of walk through this process, like, you know, as far as like, when do you feel like the, the female doesn't need to be locked anymore? Like when, when do you feel like the job's actually like on its way? Do you wait for an you, 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 you I wait. You can tell they're, they, they show, um, they have a, um, they have a hip bone in the back, the back of their tail, their girdle, where their, their back legs are. There's a right. hip bone right there. Okay. And um, when that, when they get gravid, It'll start to shrink. The tail will start to shrink. That hip bone will start to show. Then I put them in an egg box. I made a um, I made a, a, a egg incubation rack, or excuse me, a lay box, out of a 
I, I built it out of plywood and I, I, I coated it in uh, fiberglass and I, um, I put, um, I use those big cement toes from Home Depot and I drill oh. holes in them for air and I right. stick the females in there with 20% peat moss, or excuse me, 80% peat moss, 20% sand and I make it moist, not wet. And I put the females in there when I know they're gravid. I separate them and put a water bowl in there. Because I found, I used to put an egg box in the cage and they lay all over the cage. So I figured I'd just make the whole cage an egg box. So that's what I did. Wow. Okay. And, and that's and that's out of that big cement cement tote that you're talking about. Right? Yeah, I made that myself. Okay. Yep. Years uh, ago. And, it and, still and, works. <laughs> right. I mean, it's it, you got to figure out what works. Obviously, that's, that's how it comes. Like, you know, it's one thing that I, I, I learned that isn't really the ideal thing to do is follow what works for somebody else because you don't know like what your situation is compared to theirs like you got to fucking figure that shit out on your own type of thing you know well i learned i, I can't say that i have so the incubation technique you see in the box i learned that from bob applegate okay but bob used to just put so bob i used two container method right dr seward put it in his in his um in his uh his book he called it his cryo whatever method and then and, and i'll do respect i love doc he's always been cool and nice he's my friend right. but i mean bob had that same inky beach basin technique in his 1980 fucking three corn snake book you know what i'm saying <laughs> <laughs> and so i asked bob if he invented that right and bob's like well i don't know if i invented it i'm sure someone else has done it before me i don't know but bob but one thing doc seward did that, that um bob did not do um um bob that's what i'm talking about the wrestling yeah in the video that's so um, sick. Bob didn't put, he just put, he put, so he would take two containers, right? And um, the outer container, you drill four one eighth inch drill holes in and you have a lid. It's a sealed container. The inner right. container is um, a little bit smaller, so it fits in. And but Bob would put water in the outer container and then put dry vermiculite or perlite in the inner container and float it in the water. Well, Doc Seward would put um, perlite in the water. And that's what he did. And I that works better And because Doc's a pretty smart guy. He's all, if you put the perlite, it's got more surface area for moisture. Because, see, heloderma eggs are very sensitive. Gila monster even worse than beaded lizard. But they're right. all very sensitive. So the whole the key is to have about 95% humidity in your chamber, but the eggs stay dry to your touch, right? The, the, the bedding's dry. It's just humid, right? So, um, so Bob's, I use Bob's method and then Doc Seward, told me put the perlite inside the um water which i do and i use those containers you saw you can buy them at they're expensive they're those sterilite containers the octagon i buy the bigger one it's like a freezer container and then i buy a smaller one and i throw the lid away and i make it like that it works great now i mean one thing i feel like you're passionate about is the line of beaded's that you work with i feel like you you know you work with a really good quality line of the, like for instance the real fuertes and whatnot right the exasperatums i mean you, you are producing these type of exasperatums that nobody's ever seen before like next level and, and i i kind of want to know like I, I mean how did you kind of build that man like was it just breeding into it back to, back so, to back? so when i start when i start working that second job right i would go like anybody who bred beaded lizards i bought so back there was Joe Lewis had um rare earth. He bred them. I, I gave I got his best male, but I got a baby from him. My best. There was a guy named Chuck in um Wisconsin. He had a place called Saving Grace Reptiles. I spent like two grand on babies from him, twenty five hundred on one actually. And um right. anybody who bred them, I sent Chris Ryman Gila Ranch. I would buy his best shit. I would I was some anybody who was breeding beaded lizards. I would send them a deposit and get first pick of their babies. That's how I started. Okay. Wow. And by 2005, I produced 92 babies between exasperatum and horror. That was my, and that, and that was my personal best until 2000. And then, so between 2005 and last year, last year I produced over a hundred. I don't know the exact count, but I had, I had like 75 exasperatum or a, a 78 exasperatum and about over 30 hard. Of, and I had almost 30, uh, suspect them too. Also, but I didn't get any Alvarez I last year, none, zero. So, so right. this year, I mean, I'm talking about this year, um, right. but before that 2017, I got 92. I would say between 2005 <laughs> and now I, my average is about 75 babies. It would be between 65 and, and 92 babies, 92 twice. And then, I would get 80 something, but average is about 75 babies probably from 2005 till now. 
every year. And, and, and just like anything else, right, I mean, every different species has a different price tag on it. You know, like, um, you know, you mentioned how you were selling exact, you, you bought your first exasperatum for 1200 bucks in, in 96 or in the 90s or something like that. 98, right? yeah. Yes, yeah. sir. Now, and, and to this day, you sell your exp- exasperatums around what price? What What's your average baby going for? So I, I, so I graded them just like the horde of super black. I created that term. <laughs> I got some southern horridum from Chris Ryman. And right. from other places, and um, had they have reduced pattern. I bred them together, and um, I kept the the darkest ones, the least amount of spots. I kept and bred back together. I line bred them. That's how I made super black, right? Uh-huh. The exasperatum. I have a lot more of. I bought. I had like nine different lines of exasperatum. I bought them, like I said, from Rare Earth Joe Lewis. I bought them from this guy Charles Glue. I bought them from Gila Ranch. I bought them from the Oklahoma City Zoo. I got them from um. I got them from another zoo too. I, I got a, a, a zoo in Alabama, I think. I pay. I got them from anybody who bred them. I got them from. And um, what I would do is, um, I would, I would keep my best babies and breed them together. And now, what I, what I have now, I graded them just like I, I, I cr- created super black horn and why I call them ultra Rio Fuerte beaded lizards. I had, I had high yellow, then I had super Rio, which is really nice. Then I, then I call these out of sight ones that are next level. I call them ultra. For this ultra color, I mean the amount of color. I mean, I I produced five babies this year. Two of them even made me go, wow, wow. You know, what I mean, I sent you a picture of one of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull it up right now. But uh, and, and obviously yeah. these these are the ones that you're not letting go of right now either. Like these are the ones. Yeah, that, I'm these not are- selling those. But I listen. I sold some close to that. I sell those ultras for fifteen hundred bucks, and I sell my and I, they they're twelve to fifteen hundred depending on how nice. But the really nice ones I sell for fifteen hundred bucks, you know. And um, my my average regular high yellow like now. I mean, I was selling for like seven fifty, but now, bro, the price of mouse food went up like three hundred bucks, man. In the last like, I'm gonna say three years, I'm paying like almost a thousand dollars for a pallet of mouse food now. I was paying like six something. You know what I mean? And, everything, I mean, I you know, everything's gone up, bro. Everything. Everything and, and yeah. I mean, so I, now I mean, I mean now I mean, so I, I mean sometimes I'll help somebody out if they have a hard time. But I my regular my regular exasperate I'll sell now for I don't know eight hundred a thousand. Uh, my my nice I, I'll sell you nice lizard for a thousand bucks, right? So I grade them by color. This, this is the lizard Steve sold me. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. <laughs> I didn't sell that. <laughs> That's Dude. one of the ones I kept. But hey, I got one Dude. close to that right now. I'll sell for fifteen hundred bucks. Bro, Seriously. this thing is so fire right here, bro. Like, like I, I can't even wrap my mind around it. I mean, do you have an idea what this is going to look like when it's older? I don't know. I'll show you, bro. I'll send you a picture of it when it's bigger. I got two of them like that. And do you feel like the ones that are turning out like this are becoming harder to establish? Or, or, or are they, are they no. just like... No, no. The same. Same. Okay. It's just All color, right. man. It's just nice color, right? Right. Um, it's I, and and this, is, this is, these ones have a lot of block color. I have another type I'm producing that have like I don't know if the picture on my website I have a one of them they have like tiger bars down the sides like even like symmetrical bars like stripes like sick looking dude I, I I got some of those I kept some of those this year too and I want to reproduce that they look really nice now let me ask you this Stephen you 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 can be honest bro what's it like selling these these lizards to you know every community has its type right every every community like has its like you know, I don't know why I say type of weirdness, but it, I mean, you deal with a lot of weird shit selling these to, to people to random. Nah, people? The, the, the beaded lizards and the, I mean, Gila monsters are illegal in California because of a loophole. Um, right. and, and I, I fought the state. I, I have one of the only, I have venomous snakes too. I, I, I keep, yeah. I keep and breed. Like I got some super rare ass pup adders from quasi Land. I, I like pup adders. I don't know why I just do. <laughs> I got, I got a gabino. I, I think I got a gravid ring calls that I got from Dingo. I, I import a bunch of stuff from Dingo. I have the private. I, I have the only private broker dealer permit for venomous reptiles in the state of California, and I fought the state man for. Yeah, I was. Oh, too all because you got bit, right? It all started because you got bit. No, not with that. No, not with the state. Uh. Okay. No, and, I never got. I got bit by rattlesnakes twice, but that was um, that was that after my permit. I already had my life. No, no, no. One time it was not. The second time, I got bit twice in my life by rattlesnake, Western Diamondback, both times, because I was being wow. stupid, not paying attention. In the wild, in a private collection or in the wild? No, private. I was force feeding a snake, but both times. 
<laughs> oh my god, you're gnarly, bro. What the fuck? Yeah. What, yeah I, well, I, I, when what, I, what, I four speed anything now, I use gloves. I do use gloves to do it. I don't do it with my I'm bare curious, hands. I'm curious what the reaction was like. You know what? I mean, it's it's all different, right? But what was it? What was it like when you got bit by a diamondback? <laughs> I called my buddy and I said, hey, bro, I got bit by a rattlesnake. You got to take me to the hospital. <laughs> You're laughing. And I, hey, I was, hey, so, no, it was no joke. The, the first time, man, I, I, I called George Van Horn. He's a very good friend of mine. And he said, if it's blue, it's purple, not black, you're probably all right. Because I had no reaction for like an hour. I went to Kaiser and I told him, hey, I got bit. And, and I thought, well, I'm fine. And it was like an hour later. And I saw, I went to my buddy's house. He's going to give me a pain pill. It, it hurt a little bit. And right. then I started throwing up, dude. And, the, and I started having a systemic reaction. I rushed me back to the hospital. And um, they gave, they took me. I was two days in the hospital. I lost all my skin. I lost all the skin. It looked like somebody blowtorched my middle finger. And the very top, I don't know if you can see it. It's a little bit flat. I, I lost it. a little bit of tissue there. I don't oh. know. Can you see it? Oh, I can see yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was fucked up, dude. I mean, I was breathing so – I mean, I was throwing up so bad I couldn't hardly breathe. It was no joke, man. <laughs> And I, I met, then I met, but I met the top toxicologist for Kaiser Northern California, Steve Offerman, and he's an ER doctor and he's now my buddy. And, uh, so I got all these, so I got a plan with him. I got Andy Benham here. If I ever get bit by anything crazy, cause I, right now I keep Russell's, I keep Pakistani Russell's vipers. I breed those pretty much every year. And that's one of the most dangerous snakes in the world. Okay. Uh, why I still keep them? I mean, cause they're easy and they're, they're pretty easy to deal with and everything. Um, I have the, the Cape Puff Adders from uh, from Dingo. I have a pair of ring calls from Dingo. I have a, a, a Gabino that I bought from my friend in the Czech Republic. It's fucking phenomenal looking. I'm and I have some East African Gaboons. I like Gaboons and Rhinos and Puffs and shit like that. So I keep those. Um, I have a pair of um, Jahara Death Adders. Um, I just got as baby. Wow. So if anybody's in a legal state and they want Jahara Death Adders, I'm going to post on my Facebook. I might bring some in in June. So. Okay. Um, California people need not apply. <laughs> yeah. I want to. I want to kind of go back to uh, you know because did you not only the time and, and, and effort into doing these battles in courts, but the money behind everything that you put in. I mean, I want to know like what led to you having to go to court and fight for this shit. Like, like what what, what was the episode that led to that and all, and all that? I'm curious. So I was qualified, and the state didn't want to give me my license. In California, 671 Title 14, you need to have 4,000 hours hands-on experience, right? Well, I pieced together over a 10-year period the 4,000 hours, and I, I gave them what they needed, and they still didn't want to give me a license but for the Gila Monster permit. We were about to go to a hearing, and they called my lawyer, Patrick Chaka, and he called me, and he said, hey, they're going to give you a license, but they want you to do – they want you to um, they want you to report all your beaded lizard sales and pit tag your Gila Monsters. I'm like, Okay. But beaded lizards aren't even regulated, so that was illegal. But I just said I'd do it just to avoid the problem. Well, I went to apply. This is in 2008. I got the license for Heloderma suspectum. This is after a lot of bullshit. And, 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 and yeah. Anyway, um, they were just trying to make excuses to not give me my license. And um, it was my right. And I feel like um, if God is for you, who can be against you, man? If you're right and you, you believe it in your heart, and, and you put the work down, you can't fail. It's impossible to fail, man. It's impossible. You can't right. fail. Right. And I knew that. Right. And they were trying to tell me they wouldn't give me my license. I said, they're going to give me that license. the last fucking thing I do, man. Respect. I love people it. La people laughed at me. And I'm like, you don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. How long did it take? How, lo how, how long of the battle was it? Like, how long was it? It was going like from, from, the, from the beginning of the Gila Monster battle. Because so... When I started trying to try to apply for Gila Monsters, they wouldn't even hear my case because I got questioned in something years before. I never even got in trouble. And they're like, you're still under investigation. I was never. And that's bullshit. They made that up. And uh, <laughs> anyway, so as soon as that was over, this nice man at Fish and Game made him hear my case. His name was uh, Sean Cubbage. He passed away, man, from Crohn's disease afterwards. But um, he helped me, dude. He made him hear my case. And but then they just denied me. So I, me, uh, my friend James Tuttle was friends with Patrick Chaka. He's he's a top criminal law lawyer um, in um, in Santa Rosa, and basically he came and and uh, we fought the state, man. And then so in 2010, I applied for my venomous snake permit because I was already qualified. I had a letter from from my friend Joel, and um, they denied me. <laughs> and 
basically my lawyer calls me and said, Hey, they want 671 title 14 said you need A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I, I gave that to him. Well, my lawyer called and said, they want A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, elemental P. Can you do it? I said, fine. I did it. So I turned it in. Then six months went by and they're making excuses, furloughs, furloughs, furloughs. Then my great lawyer that we may need one day wrote this letter. Listen to this. I remember it, right? He sent this letter to Fishing Game. We will refer to the, the, the Supreme Court of California's timeline to your department's dubious conception of due process. <laughs> Either give us an answer, yes or no, or we're going to sue you for discrimination. Wow. And they basically told me no. And then I wrote the letter to get to the appeal. Ten months later, I heard the appeal. And I told you the story about that. We won the appeal. I've never had a problem since. This is an old regime in fishing yeah. game, mind you. The regime fishing game now today is great. All the game wardens are great with me. They're awesome. So if you're listening, fishing game, I love you guys. <laughs> they've been super <laughs> nice to me. Seriously. Let's make you know, it clear. Yeah, they've been really good to me. They have given me no problem. The game wardens come over and do my inspection. They're fucking awesome. That's um, awesome. I love it. Lucy Lopez does my permit. She's awesome. This was the old regime that did this shit to me, right? And um, so the the regime that's in now, they're really good. They're straight up. They're good. They've been good. They've been good to me. How often, how often do they come by and, and, and inspect your stuff? I have a yearly inspection for my um six seventy one my restricted species permit and my broker dealer permit. I have, a, I have a restricted species permit and a broker dealer permit from California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And are, are you providing any information to the courts at this point, or no? Are you are they are, you, are they leaving you alone? Or are they like court, this, this is no, this is no, bro. A after I won the hearing in 2010, yeah. um, they gave me the permit. I've never had a problem ever since. I became friends with the with the head game warden, um, Kyle Chang. who has been super good to me. Um, yeah, and everybody else, they've been good to me ever since. I've had no problem. Okay, right. Yeah, on. no, I haven't. I haven't had any problem with the law, man. I don't break the law either, bro. I mean, I. The right. reason I was I was so militant about it is because it was my fucking right, dude. Right. We have a right to a pursuit that we have a right as Americans to a pursuit of happiness, man. You know it's crazy that you you mentioned this with this kind of energy because I'm sure we you grew up doing some sort of wrong, so you know when you're doing something that's actually wrong, and when you're actually doing something right, and you're still getting like the no, you're like, what the fuck? I'm not doing anything illegal. That's why you fought for this shit. And it's my right. It was my passion right. to do some good. God put that in my heart, man. Right. You know what I mean? And I, I, I'm, a, I'm a recovered drug addict and alcoholic, man. Respect. I'm an active member of Alcoholics Anonymous. I go out and help God's kids on a regular basis, man. That's my number one job. Help Ooh. God's kids. <laughs> and then, hey, I get to make a living selling fucking reptiles. And I make a pretty good living too, man, right? You can't get hey, You can't <laughs> lose. I mean, look yeah. at you, Michael. You look at you. You got, you got, I, I seen your whole get down. You got so much passion, man, for what you're doing, man. It's Thank in your heart and you're straight up and look at your thriving, man. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate well, you that. You can't fail. You can't. Yeah. You just do the right yet. thing. You treat people with love and respect, man, and everything will work out for you. I love it, man. Thank you. And, and I want to, I want to clarify, you know, back when me and Steve, you know, even though you sold me that beaded, we'd had conversations. Remember when you helped me get into jujitsu, you know what yeah, I mean? I do. And that, that right there, dude, that helped with my anger. Like I, I didn't have, to, I had no energy to be mad. I was so tired and beat from just putting in so much effort on those mats that like my energy went, like I started reserving it and, 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 and spending my energy on what mattered and shit like that. You know what I mean? And Dude, I needed that more than anything. Jiu-Jitsu saved my life, bro, for sure. Hey, bro, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Hey, I thought I was fucking tough and I could fight until I went there. <laughs> <laughs> I got a piece of shit out of me. I have these, bro, I have these teenagers that have just fucking put me out like it's nothing. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, the younger they, <laughs> they the don't young, know. Yeah, the they younger they know. are, the younger they are, the more scared I am of them, bro. I'm like, dude, these fucking kids, these fresh out of high school 18-year-olds are just savages, bro. Oh, like, they are, dude, for sure. Nuts. Um, for sure. Now, I, I want to kind of talk about what your opinion is as far as the, the, the market of beaded all around. Do you feel like people would eventually be able to do what you're doing out of sense as far as getting down a project and start selling them and getting more of these? Yeah, beads? I mean, it's a very popular animal. I mean, so people get held back by its venomous, bro. I mean, I've been bit by those things fucking probably 50 times. I'm not trying to say it's because I'm not really scared of them because it just hurts pretty bad. It hurts if you get bit. I mean, yeah. I don't try to get bit, but I mean, I'm talking about over 20 years. I used to get bit by babies a lot. That's why, because I used to try to pull them out of the kit. I was very careless. Now, I don't really get bit very often. Once in a blue moon, it happens. But my adults are all very tame and docile. If you came to my table at a reptile show, 
I have a big adult that was born in 2005. My my workers like fucking sit him on their shoulder in their lap all day, dude. He's just they're chill, dude. They make a better pet than a monitor lizard, man. They do. I mean, they it, calm down really easy. I'm talking about as far as calmness and everything like that. You know right. what I mean? Now, I mean, you, but you can't say that some have their personality. Like you have some that are fuckers too, right? Like that are just like on. The I diff- mean, most of my adult exasperate them. I can pick them up by the tail and sit them in my hand. They might hiss and stuff. They're not just gonna go crazy and try to bite me, man. Nah. Right now, the now, human monsters will bite. Yeah, they're more aggressive. Now, obviously, someone will get bit out there by by anything they keep, right? What what is the protocol for you if anyone out there gets bit? So, by one? okay, so get them off really fast, because. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if, if they so if you look at my website there's a diagram right it's an old diagram from bogart and del campos book their teeth are like a shark they're retractable so like a big a, a large adult male beaded lizard has teeth probably bro they're probably like close to i don't know dude they're big man right. it's like and they they look like shards of glass and they they sit down on their gum but they when they bite a mouse you can see them, they're like shark's teeth and um they right. got a groove in a pit and so in heloderma, um, in beaded lizards, they have one orifice on each side of the bottom of their jaw. They have venom glands under their jaw, both of them, okay? And if okay. they get upset or excited, they, they'll pump that venom into their saliva. If they bite you once, twice, three times, you're juiced. If you, they bite you one time, if they bite down once and you get away, if they're not too upset, it's not too bad. Babies, one bite, you're okay. But they even a baby beaded lizard squeezes down on your finger three times, it's going to swell your hand up. You're going to have a hard day. It hurts. I feel like your hand, it's like you got hit, hit in the hand with a hammer, man. You know? Yeah. I mean, but you know, but in, 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 all in all, it's not, it's not death. I mean, it's not. Nobody's anything. ever, so no healthy human being has ever died from a Gila monster beetle lizard bite. And I, I asked, um, I asked Daniel Beck, it's, it's not a lethal bite. It's just not. It's very painful though. And you, I mean, I, I know a story of a young man, friend of mine, he was in the Navy and he got bit by an adult beetle lizard and it hung onto his finger for like a minute. And bro, he threw up. He he lost. I mean, he shit and pissed himself. Everything, man. It was pretty bad. No, yeah, but it's because it was it was an adult. It was angry, and it held on for a while. Yeah, you know I mean, no, we that's the worst case scenario I've heard of. That. No, we haven't talked much about the personality or even the pack of a bite that a Gila monster can do compared to the beaded. What's what's? I mean, I don't know. Gila monsters are much more aggressive animals. Just like I said, when you try to breed them, they'll rip each other limb from limb. A beaded lizard will hiss and try to bump you with its head, right? Right. That animal my friend got bit by, I don't know where it came from. But any of the animals I have that have captive bred, if you pick them up when they're babies with forceps and don't grab behind the head and pick them by their tail, they don't even, when they get to a certain size, they don't even fucking bite, dude. Once just, they're not afraid of you, they don't bite. They just we're don't. Talking about, we're talking about Gila monsters, or Gila monsters, right? Oh, mm-hmm. they bite, dude. It's a, it's yeah. called it's pronounced Gila, but it's spelled Gila. Yeah. Okay, Gila. So the Gila monsters are, are definitely different ballpark when it comes to but, i mean some of those can become very tame too if you spend a little time with them they they all they can tame down too a lot of people have very docile gila monsters as pets too it depends what about i just don't really but as a as a rule they're more aggressive than beaded lizards for sure and the, as far as beating the gila monsters i mean it's same same scenario or are they a little more difficult it's harder for me i mean it's because of why i think it's where i live right because i mean california used to be mexico bro yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. My yeah. climate here is like, I think it's it helps me some, bro. Yeah, right. I mean, I do. Gila mm-hmm. monsters need to get down at, I, I would say, 55 degrees for three months to breed them. To have, I mean, you can breed them at 60, but they got to stay below 60 for like three months. Beaded lizards, if you keep them between 60 and 65 for three months, they'll breed anyway. They're pretty, they're more subtropical or easier. And, and, and everything. Mean? Everything is seasonal for you, right? Like you were saying before, there's that time period where they're not eating or anything. Is that for that three months, right? Like, right, you don't, you don't do nothing. Like you're not fucking with them at all. Uh, right? I give them. I do. I check. I give them water. They have a water bowl. I take. So when I have them live, I keep big water dishes like you saw in the video, the Freedom Breeder. Um, in cooling period, I put a small water dish so they can drink. I don't want them getting in the water when it's cold. I don't. Right. Okay. And um, if you got if, for you guys, if you, if you don't have other stuff, I, I usually would cool them down, and I would stop feeding them in Thanksgiving, and um, I would ch- ch- cool, bring them down in December, January, February, and um, and I would um, heat them up in March and throw them together, dude. And usually my beaded lizards would breed about 
May, June. My Gila monsters would breed um um in like April, April, May. So so you're you're cutting the food off in November and then you're not offering till about February, March? No, till until I bring them out of high, I don't feed them nothing when they're cooling. Nothing. So not until not until you heat them up again. That's when you feed them. That's it. Nothing. Yep. And, and and obviously you want to start them off smaller since it's been a while, right? Or right like, out of cool, Mike. So my worker did that. He fed them big ass meals out of cooling. A bunch of them threw up. I'm like, yeah, too. You that's can't. That's not good, it. right? And, no, and your the, stomach shrinks when you don't eat, right? We, we haven't talked about how bad it is for a beat it to, to throw up. I mean, it's not good if they puke, man. I mean, once if you if, if they throw up one time, it's fine. You just don't want to feed them again for like ten days. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And then feed them something really small. You don't want them puking. If it gets chronic, they can die, especially babies. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Now, to go back to you getting them started slowly, um, I'm just curious. Like, what's your prefer meal size for your adults? Like, what do you like to feed your females? I feed my adult females medium-sized rats, my adult males small rats. You don't want your males all bloated and fat. I mean, hey. If you go eat like a whole pizza, you don't want to have sex afterwards. Not That's really. Like, oh, listen, I my <laughs> my wife, listen, my wife, I, my wife's hot as shit. I love her to death. But then, like, there's times where she's like wants to get frisky after I just ate all this food, and I'm like, babe, I'm not, I don't feel attractive right now. No offense, <laughs> I, I just, I, I don't feel like you should be touching any of this. Like, <laughs> I, like, I don't feel good. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not confident. I don't look good. <laughs> no, you feel awful, dude. No, <laughs> no. No one wants to have sex when they're all blown out from eating too much. Too. You know what I mean? It's not fair that she's not, you know, I'm, I'm the one with the belly. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, you Hey, know. bro. So, so the, uh, my, yeah, with helodramatic lizards, it's better to keep your males not not skinny, but a little on the leaner side. And the females, you want them to have a lot of fat in their tail. And how, how often, like once they're, they're up and going. Once a week. I feed them all once a week. Babies, are, they're more like a snake with legs. And the temperatures, they don't like the heat, right? I keep my my um. They're in a room, eighty degrees. I have a heat tape in my in my racks. It's it's set at ninety. That's it. Okay. How often are they on the ninety side? Do you do you ever see them on the hot side? They'll sit on the tape after they eat. That's it for digestion, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So and that ninety hot spots there twenty four seven. Yeah. Okay. So if you if for somebody who has a beaded lizard in a four by two or in an enclosure like that. You still recommend a heat spot of ninety at all at all twenty four seven times? No, or? no. So m- m- the first up until I got, you know, I didn't have money to buy freedom breeders when I started. Man, I made boxes right. out of plywood. They were two foot by four foot by twenty inches tall with an overhead like a hundred watt ceramic heat emitter. And I u- I made sure I used a pancake box and I used oven cord so that shit didn't melt and start a fire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Right. And I used Johnson. I used Johnson. Now they have all these red herb stat. Uh, all the you know freedom breeder sells a good thermostat all that shit's great better reptile basic sells it you know but at the time i used all johnson controls the a419 the freezer thermos you know the high they're like made for walk-in freezers and shit and i would put the the, um, probe on the floor in the center of the cage and i set it at 78 degrees okay i set it at 78 degrees so um so i basically i kept them about 80 degrees man they, if, if, if the heat was on, they get a little warmer under the uh, under the heat and ceramic heat emitter. But I don't think it's that critical, man. I bred them like that for years, man, in those boxes. Okay, that's awesome. I mean, I mean, I feel like uh, I don't know, man. At, at some point, it has to come down to preference. Like you know, there's a lot of people who look to even keeping any snake in a rack as a bad thing, but it depends on the snake. You know what I mean? Like, well, you I, know, a lot of people want to look at their animals too, bro. I mean. True. You, got, you spend a fucking fifteen hundred dollars on a lizard, right? You want to be able to see it, right? So you want to put them in a nice box. It's cool. I would, as a matter of fact, I would um, seventy eight pot. My room is really warm. It's like eighty degrees constantly. My room's eighty. So, right. um, and then those Johnson controls they kick on with, with a one degree differential. They're not they're not proportional like the thermostats you guys are using. So if right. I was going to use a proportional thermostat, I would set it on the middle of the cage. And I would set it probably like 80 or 81. You know what I mean? Right. hundred mm-hmm. percent. Now, maybe even, maybe even 82, it would be okay. Okay. You know what I mean, if you set it in the middle of the cage, that way, if they want to get over away from it, they could probably get colder and they want to get close. They could, they could get warmer. And when I first started doing it, I, I set it at 82 and I used a helix thermostat, which was proportional. That was my first thermostat. So then I realized that, you know, I didn't want to spend that much money, and I wanted commercial. I thought I thought Johnson controls were better, 
But it's still a very it's a commercial grade thermostat. It works good, dude. You know what I mean? Now, I, I haven't asked you yet as far as when you approach a first time female into breeding. What, what, when is that like a, a go a go for you? Like when, when you want to let a girl go for her first time? I mean, usually about four years old. I bred them at three years old, depending on size. If they're okay. big enough, you know what I mean? You can right. breed them at three years. If you feed them a lot, dude, and they never have no problems, you can get them to breeding size at three years. They're born in January. So mm -hmm. I would say that um, January, February, exasperatum are born. Hordum are usually born uh, a little later because um, they're usually late. I usually get hordum eggs in September. Alvarezi are usually born in May, June. They're different. I, that, so that kind of messed up my whole cooling cycle because the Alvarezi, I had to put them in the same room. So I had to push everything, you know, ahead. But um, I, I, a female is a good breeding size. I'd say if you feed them once a week and everything, you don't have no problems. I think four years old is good. You breed them too soon, they get egg bound and shit. I mean, now, now, you know, if it's one thing about this damn industry or this hobby, you know, everything I love the most is the most expensive. <laughs> you know, like well, that's it, like that with everything, bro. Right? I mean, but if you have good taste, like if, you, if, if, if you have good taste, right? So Alvarez, I completely different ball game when it comes to pricing than the exasperatums, correct? Yeah. So the first ones I sold for ten grand. Um, and then I sold them. I sold, I thought I was going to breed them prolifically when I got 21. So I dropped it down to 6,000. Right. And, um, Damn. and then now dude, I mean, bro, I'm probably going to sell the next ones for 10 grand again. I lost some of my females and everything and, um, they're hard to breed and they're, I don't think Mexico is going to let any out ever again. And, um, I, the good news is what I have, I have, I kept back some from all the animals I had. So I have like, um, I have like, see, I brought in originally I had 7.6. So I had six different females that I bred to and seven different males that were all unrelated that I started with. You know what I mean, wow. And they're okay. all, all my adults are all like no patternless. They're all solid, either, either mahogany with a rust undertone or they're all black, solid black. And, and, and you don't find these things out there ever. Like I don't, I don't, I don't Hardly ever I mean, seen. you know, sometimes you people. So there were a bunch of guys that got busted. They were trying to, you could have bought them. You could have got them. They offered them to me. There's some guy offered me, fuck, I don't know. He had a bathtub full of me. I called me. He's like, hey, I'll give you all these for, I forget, like 1,500 each or something. I'm like, yeah, no thanks, bro. I'm, yeah. I'm straight, dude. And I, I think that dude's like in, like went to prison or something. People got, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah. That's a, good mean, point. That's a good point, bro, because there are scenarios in this in this fucking game where you get an opportunity and you're like, what? Like, and you gotta be smart about that. You you know, you don't you don't just buy shit because it's in a tub. You know what I mean? Like nah, I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, you know, I'm not gonna I, I got CITES permits from Florida and Fauna in Mexico City with my name on them. And right. Fish and Wildlife knows it because they cleared that shit. Right. So they know all my shit's legal, all my shit's legit. You right. know what I mean? So 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's, uh, I'm just curious, uh, Steve, what, what the overall game plan is for you with the, these lines of exasperatums. I mean, I care about the other stuff, but I have some of your exasperatums. So that's why I'm so curious on like, you know, what's the overall goal with these lines that you're, that you're producing? I mean, like, dude, I like to, I like to produce almost all yellow lizard one day. We'll see. <laughs> so that's what the, that's the game plan. I mean, I don't know. They, I think the more color, the better, right? Yeah, and, and I'm curious because you even had some that like look high purple, and what's what's the that? Purple, on the babies, all the purple turns yellow later. God, it doesn't okay. stay purple. I so do have I do have a hypo. I have I had two hypos. I've got I produced twice, right. and um and they never bred for me. I still got one of them, and he's got some purple in him still, and he's like a whitewash color. If you come see me, I'll be at the um I'll be at the promo the reptile super show at Anaheim. Sick. And um, we'll be at um, – there's a show in Sacramento, too, in Roseville. We'll be there in June. But we'll be at the July um, 9th and 10th uh, Rami Super Show, man. I'll be so there. So if you want to come hold – you come down and see him. Come see me. You'll be there. Will you be there or no? Yeah, bro, 100%. I, I, hopefully you can make it to my, my event in San Diego. I have that, that big event happening Thursday night, the week of Anaheim. Oh, if I – well, I, I got the baby. I would, bro, but I got the baby, and I tie, I'm i going through some other nonsense I told you about, right? Oh, right, right, right. I feel yeah. you. Okay. No worries. No, no, but let me ask you this. Since we're talking about shows, uh, Steve, I mean, what's your overall, like, 
scheduling for shows? Do you only do the ones in Cali? Do I, I do. I only do. I do Rami super shows, man. I do the one in Pomona. I do the one in Anna and in, in Anaheim. And then um, I probably will do Sacramento if they have it this year because it's local. And then this guy, Reptilian Nation, he had one in Roseville. I went because it's like in my backyard, right? That dude was hell. He treated me really good. He was nice. It was a nice place. So I'll probably do that. You know what I mean? And I'll be traveling and stuff. I sell most of my stuff online, you know? People call me. Right you know on. I mean? Now, I have, I, have a, I have a wrap-up question before we get into the hot seat questions here, Steve. Um, and, and I'm curious, you know, a lot of people that are going to listen to this episode, you know, there's already people who want be the lizards. I can tell you that. A lot of people, are, are, you know, I, when, I, when I show yours off of my stories, everyone's asked me, where'd you get that? Where'd you get that, right? So for anyone out there who stumbles across their first beaded or is very passionate about getting – a project started. I want to. I want to hear from you what your your one hundred ones are. What your opinion is on approaching a, a, a project such the beaded's or even the gila's like all together. Well, um, what, what do you mean by that? I, I, I don't understand the question. Your approach. So, like, what, what, what's your recommendation if, if, for anyone before they get into a species like this or a project like this? Like, do you have any kind of like uh, just advice as far? Yeah. As so they- don't don't do shit for money. Do what you love. Period. I never did this for money. It just ended up that way. Okay. So I remember I was buying beetles for all this money and, and, and you know, and, and I was, I was gonna, like, I'm going to breed them one day. I didn't know if I was going to fucking breed them one day or not. I just wanted them. <laughs> right. Yeah. It just happened. Do what you love. Doug, if you do something for a dollar, man, you ain't going to do good, man. You got to do it because you love it. Yeah. 100%. If you don't love it, you ain't, you're going to lose interest. Not have no time. And, and also I, me and my wife breed heliodermid lizards and, and ornate diamondback terrapins and, and mangrove diamondback terrapins. And um, because I've always loved ornate diamondback terrapins, man. In 2015, right. me and my, my buddy, um, me and my buddy um, uh, spent all this money and bought a bunch of babies. And we spent about 30 grand on babies. And then we spent, um, we built a greenhouse in my backyard. And, and then I got married. My wife does all the turtle stuff, man. And, um, I yeah, love we're... those. We have ornate diamondback terrapins, really nice ones, flower backs, some spotless, all that stuff. If you're interested, it's a very high end turtle, but they're cool, man. We I never to... really liked turtles before, but I like those. I'm so... sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let's talk a little bit more about the turtles. We didn't even get into that. I want to talk a little bit more about what what your uh, what these projects are. I want to actually show one on your Instagram here. Is this one of them? Um. Yes, that is a, a mangrove terrapin. Super rare. Super and, rare. And how big of a how big are you with the uh, like as far as like stock wise? I mean, how many of these turtles are you working with? A couple hundred. Damn. And these I got are all- a big. I got a greenhouse. We got we have a greenhouse. I built in the backyard. It's all redwood and poly bicarbonate. It's pretty big, bro. I got ten hundred and fifty gallon Rubbermaid tubs all plumbed together. Um, UV sterilizer, giant like pool pump, and um, bead koi bead filter backwashing everything and uh it's uh yeah we have a lot of turtles man and, I, and also in the inside the building we have um let's see seven um i have one of those big vegetable vats the white ones um right. and i got six um hundred gallons tanks inside plus i got other tanks. we have a lot of turtles man dude that is so sick everyone check out this video right now now i mean as far as what's the production like do you have some of these available right now or or, yeah, uh, we have eggs in the incubator right now. We produce probably a couple hundred. I think we'll be a couple hundred this year. Oh my god, this is so cute! Look at this shit. <laughs> yeah, we're sending. I'm sending 42 to Hong Kong next week. 42 to Hong Kong. Yeah, dude, I'm sure because they love turtles back there, bro. Yeah, kidding? I got. We have we have one of the only Matt. We have master file sighties um, for these turtles to ship them um, overseas and stuff. Damn, epic. Now, yeah. I mean. For anyone who's ever curious, you know, to find out what you have available is the website your their best bet is to I mean they can just website. call me, bro. I'm a hands on type of dude. If you're into something, you can just message me on Facebook or call me. My website has my phone number. That's how I get out. I'm not like you know what I mean? I usually talk to people. Right. Okay. I'm pretty reachable, bro. I mean, you know, you can talk to me. I'm not I'm not like one of those dudes. I think I've I bred reptiles, I cured cancer. I mean, I, I breed reptiles, man. It's not a big fucking deal, you know. No, you know what and, and what's crazy, like there's there's people who've been doing this so long to where like they love it, but it's like they don't feel like they're anything special. But to me, 
Like this recently changed my life over the last five years. So when whoever I'm looking at who's been doing this for a long time and is paving the way for people like myself, bro, you're like a WWF superstar to me, bro. Like you're a big deal. And and, and, and I'm not the only one who looks at people at, at you like this. Stephen Cush respects the shit out of you. Like you understand the way Forrest talked to me about you. Like you are highly respected, bro. So you should, you should uh, you know, be happy about that for sure. Yeah, thank you, man. Forrest was my friend too, man. I, uh, you know, I was really sad that, uh, that we lost him. It, it was hard, yeah. All right, listen, I I, I, uh, I normally don't let people tell me what to ask, but this is a very highly requested question. It's related to the Hurt Nation magazine. Are you familiar about that? Uh, what? But that yes. it doesn't, doesn't publish anymore or something like that? Or, or, or what's yeah, going it's on? out of print. It was out of print the year they made it, but what about it? I don't know. People are, I guess there's articles or something like that that they're looking like Venom articles and they just can't find the articles no more. And they're curious. I guess they're, they're, they're bent about it. Apparently. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I might. So maybe I'll try to dig that magazine up and if I can find it. Um, okay. Yeah. That guy, he went out, he, he was a, a guy who had a great idea and he did it for a while and then it went out of business and all the copies were sold. So wow. crazy. I might, have, I might have one somewhere if I can look. You know what I mean? And it's from a it's from a past where it wasn't digital. It's not like on the internet, right? So. Yeah, you know what, man? I'm, I mean, I may, I'm going to write something again. That'd I mean, my, I got a brand new baby. I was blessed. Me and my wife were blessed. I had a brand new baby Congrats. boy born. It'll be blast. nine months on the 27th of this month. So, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm pretty busy, man, now. But, I mean, eventually I'm going to probably write a book on the captive propagation and husbandry of heliodramatic lizards, I would think. That would be sick, bro. I mean, obviously, yeah. you, you have the knowledge and have enough to, to, to put in a book. So, fuck it. Why not? You know, when you have time, do it. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Awesome. Well, hey, you know, a- every, I got to keep on doing that. You know, I told you, like I, I shared, I was a, rec- I'm a recovered drug addict and alcoholic. So, um, I got to spend my time helping people that need help, man. Just like this man helped me. You understand? 100%, bro. Talk about that. That's you friends. Know? I mean, I, I won't forget our conversations. And obviously, I won't forget this episode. But everything that you... I'm not the only one who feels the passion behind your talking. A lot of people in the comments are super inspired off this episode. So I got to say, this is this has been one of the one of the best episodes I've had on a Sunday. I'll tell you that right now. Hey, can I can I close with this? Listen, man, there might come a time when we all got to pool together, man, and put our money together and everything and fight. The, I mean, if the government tried to ban us from doing our business, we're gonna have to just like I fought the state of California. I told Patrick, man, one day we might end up on the doorstep of the Supreme Court. You know what I'm saying? 100%. You gotta, I mean, USR is good, too. But if, if something happens and they don't – and something, then they try to pass one of these, like, unjust laws that's totally unconstitutional, we're going to have to stand up together, man. Because if we don't – if we don't – if we don't – you have to make – if you have – in this world, these days – you got to make people give you do what's right sometimes. Because if, if you don't and you just let them just systematically take away our rights, man, we're going to be fucked, man. There's there's people, for the most part, who let other people walk all over them. And they don't do nothing about it. And and that's, that's what you can't be in this industry. You have to fucking step up and do what's right. Because if not, they will do the worst. You know what I'm saying? So it, 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 you're right. I'm glad you closed with that because that's very important. Like your whole story on you fucking going and, 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 and fighting for that permit and saying, no, fuck this shit. I, you know, you denied me for, for no reason. Like there's no, no legit reason to deny my permit. And you fucking fought for that shit. And look, you, you won. So, well, I mean, you- let's face it, dude, they're passing these laws. There's no, there's no real basis for these laws. They're fear based and they're somebody's agenda. Because they don't want people making money off of animals. Well, it doesn't matter what they want. I mean, right. it, it's we have a right to make a living. We have a right to a pursuit of happiness, just like everybody else in the United States, right? Exactly. When I was a little boy, I'm older than you, brother. When I was a little boy, they taught me about liberty and justice for all, man. And, and they need to give us that. Yeah, I, I think I was a lot of people. A lot of people died for the freedoms we enjoyed here. We cannot allow them to take them away from us. I was I was raised with that mentality, dude. My dad, my I was raised right. I was in that that cloth, that generation who understood what this country's all about, what it stands for. I, I'm I'm totally with you on that, bro. And uh, you know what I mean. And, and it's a different day and age. You know what I mean. A lot of people that that skips through everyone's head nowadays. Everyone's too worried about the most stupidest shit. But uh, fucking amazing episode, Steve. Listen, we have these hot tea questions before you get out of here, okay? So let all me right. hit, let me hit with these hot tea questions. Um. I don't need an explanation. You know, I, I just give me the answer as quick as you can. You ready for these? Yeah. 
All right, here we go. Hot seat questions for my boy Steve Angeli coming in hot. Here we go. Frozen thought or live? I, I use frozen thought for Hilodermis. It's fine. Uh, for babies, live is easier because you could drop them in. Sometimes they'll eat on their own. If you had to pick those, Steve, if you there was no choice to do both, what would you do? Frozen thought or live? Frozen thought. Okay. I mean, Eight. for babies, I do live. I do. But for adults, frozen thought, no doubt about it. A cut or no cut? What's that? Would you cut an egg ever or would you No never... eggs, dude. Eggs is bullshit. Bob Applegate told me in 1998, don't feed them eggs. They're not good for them. They like no, eggs. I like no, I I'm like talking pizza. About, I'm talking about cutting an egg open like like No. Milk. No, if it's if it doesn't come out in its own, it's not going to hatch. Don't ever do that. Okay. Um favorite species of beetle lizard? Mm, I don't know, dude. Yeah, I'm going to I don't know, man. Probably uh I mean probably <laughs> Alvarez I or exasperate him. Okay. Uh yay imports or boo imports? What do you mean? Would you if if it, if the law landed on you to say you are allowed to import reptiles anywhere or no imports, period, what would you decide on? I would say freedom, man, imports. All right. One reptile you would import today. If you, if you could reptile if you could import any reptile anywhere in the world, what reptile would you import today? I mean, I already got what I wanted, dude. <laughs> I'm a reptile. I already awesome. got it. So would you take another one if you could? Like if someone had I mean, one? I, I don't really – I mean, they're, for me, I, for what I – for myself, man, I mean, that was that was a holy grail for me, bro, and I got it. Right. Okay. Respect. What's one What's one reptile nobody should ever import ever again? Just leave it the fuck alone. I mean, a Tuatara. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yay sports or boo sports? Man, I love fucking sports. I love the Raiders. I love the yeah, baby Raiders. Oh, hey, bro. hey, I'm from the fucking town, bro. Town business. I'm from yeah, Oakland, bro. Baby. I love the Raiders, the A's, and the Warriors are gonna win the championship too. I'm from the town, baby. Let's go, Rap Bay. Let's go. <laughs> hey, but I like I like the Lakers too. I used to love Kobe and and and, the, and I love. I grew up loving the Showtime Lakers, man. The favorite. So, what's your favorite sport? If you could pick one favorite sport, what would it be? Football, Raiders, bro, all day, homie. Favorite Raider season of all time. What was your favorite Raider season of all time? I mean, 1976. I was a little boy, dude, when they beat the Vikings in the Super Bowl. That was when John Madden got carried off the field, man. Wow, you were there for that? Bro, I'm 55 years old, man. Oh, my God, that's epic. Okay, steak or fish? What kind Did of you, fish? Like, in, like, if do, do you rather eat steak or you rather eat fish? Whatever. Lobster, fish. bro. Lobster, <laughs> homie. <laughs> yeah, okay, um. I, I think I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you anyways. Yay alcohol or boo alcohol? Man, hey, bruh, if you have, if you need some outside thing to make you enjoy this life, you ain't doing it right. Damn, amen. Uh, Van Halen or Sammy Hagar? Van Halen. For sure. All right, little word association. First thing to come to mind, milk. Babies. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Substrate. Aspen. First time beta lizard owner. It's the coolest reptile you'll ever own. It's like a baby dinosaur. Instagram trolls. What's that? Instagram trolls. I, I don't like trolls, bro. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> okay, if you had to get rid of one platform forever, Steve, and I mean forever, never coming back, are you going to get rid of Facebook or are you going to get rid of Instagram? Which one has to go? Damn, dude. I think Facebook caused a lot of problems, man. I mean, wow. I mean, I think they're one and the same. How can you pick one? I mean, I feel like Instagram's the future and, and for sales and all that personally, but also Facebook is also loyal. I mean, a lot of people have been loyal to Facebook for so many years, but I, I mean, mean it, I think Facebook probably caused a lot of problems, bro. Right. I agree. Oh, man. I, I, if I didn't have my business, I, I don't know. I, I, if you notice my Facebook posts are all about either my family, God, or my business. That's it. I don't talk right. about anything else on there. Right. There you go. If it's not, And if it's not positive and bringing hope and light to this world, you won't see it on my Facebook page. Now, I might, I might make a vulgar joke once in a while. I almost, I almost posted, I took a picture on ESPN. It said World Cornholing Championship. I almost posted it on my Facebook with the hands up. I almost couldn't help myself. It's just hilarious, dude. Oh, dude. That's too hilarious. Hey, bro, I, I'm, a, I, I'm a disciple of the Christ. I'm not a fucking saint. 
Right. <laughs> exactly. Hey, Steve, we had we had well over 80 people at one point in this episode, all showing you love and support. What do you have to say to all your supporters out there, everyone who fucking supports you? What do you have to say to them? I mean, I just want to thank everybody, man, who um, supports our business and supports the kind of life that I'm living today. Um, you know, every 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 single person out there can do what I did or do greater things. If you have a desire in your heart for something good, it's God's promise to you. It's already yours. You're just gonna have to walk the path to get it, man. And that's it. If you do that, and if you and if you're honest and you're right, it's impossible to fucking fail. You understand? Doesn't mean you won't. Here it is with me, with the permit. I failed. Do it again. I failed. I did it again. I failed. I did it again. I finally, I, I made it. Reggie yeah. Jackson struck out like more than almost anybody else, but you don't remember that. You remember nope. all the home runs he hit in the World Series, dude. All the bases he stole, everything. Yep. If you if you're not willing to fail, you'll never succeed. But failure is not lost. Right. Failure not. Is not lost. Failure is just another step. 100%. Well, listen, I appreciate this episode. Well overdue, but we did it, man. Thank you so much. And it's a wrap for my man, Steve Angie from Steve Angie Reptiles, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Hey, you're the man, Steve. And by the way, do not sell that uh, Exasperatum. I want it, that $1,500 one. We'll talk later. I'm not selling it. Oh, the one I got? Yeah, I'll hold it. I got, I, I got a really right. nice one for you, seriously. All right, we'll talk later. Thank you. Hey, enjoy, the rest you. Of, enjoy the rest of your night. Tell your wife I said thank you for allowing you to fucking do this and get it in because I know how hard it must be to have a newborn. But, dude, keep killing it as a dad. Keep posting pictures of your baby boy because that's inspiring, man. Thank you so much, Thank Steve. you, man. And you keep doing what you're doing, man. I, I, I like your style, yo. Uh, Thanks, Steve. We'll connect. Uh, have, a, have a good night, man. See you later. What a fucking OG. Woof. That guy was sick as fuck. Amazing episode. I'm like, I'm pumped up right now. Uh, I think it started off with just major insp insp inspiring statements that he was saying. Um, and anyways, uh, thank you guys. Thank you to everyone who tapped in. Uh, before you check out, before we leave, hit that like button for my boy, Steve Angeli. Drop a comment. Let me know what you like the best out of this episode. Um, and again, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. If this is your first time tapping in, please, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are ready for a big week. Uh, tomorrow night, we have somebody who's been, I mean, highly requested to come on the show. And I mean, I mean, yeah, he wants to come on, but other people have been asking me to bring this guy on. So I'm going to bring him on. Uh, Monday, tomorrow, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time with my boy um, oh my god my, Sebastian, Woof! Sebastian Walker in the building going down here on Trap Talk for Trap Talks new breeder on the block series so ball python breeders be ready because this guy's killing it, he's tapped into some heavy breeders right now and then Thursday night it's going down the very first segment the very first episode with the no buddy safe session, my boy Chris Eaton, Snakes and the Fat Man, Trap Talk with MJ collaboration going down. This will be a monthly thing. So just be ready for it. We are not fucking around. It's going to go down, baby. This Thursday night, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Set your reminders. It's going to go down. And again, shout out to everyone who came through for my boy Steve Angeli. Shout out to Steve Angeli Reptiles. Again, this is going to be uh, something I cannot wait to rewatch. And, uh, yeah, guys, enjoy the rest of your night. My Patreon members, I will see you guys right now for our Trap Talk Zoom session. Enjoy the